That is the sleeping mute. Her head is on the right, her arms or breasts in the middle, and then feet at the far left. And that is the mountain range that, or mountain, I should say, that Cortez sits at the foot of. Also the town where I was born. Uh, so I fly home tomorrow. I can't say I'm ready, and by home I mean Copenhagen. Uh, so many homes, really. Uh, it has been a truly fantastic trip, um, but I figured I'd get at least one more reflection in here really quickly. Over the last couple days, spending time with family, spending time immersed in, um, I guess, Southwesterners and uh, my native English speakers, both from a standpoint of native in the sense of being back in the U.S., of course, but also back in the region where I, I grew up. Um, so I guess my dialect of English has been great. Uh, I've talked a lot about how loud it was initially, um, both from a volume standpoint, but also from the standpoint of uh, the fact that uh, my my mind is hearing everything. And so there it's, you know, walking through a crowd, it's kind of like being exposed to a machine gun of English coming at me from all different ways and that I've I've needed to speed up my my thought process and my my hearing uh, and that kind of gets back to the topic of language and I've talked about this a little bit but the more time I spend abroad uh, and the more I, I look at kind of the linguistic side of it the more I, I get interested in in the, the the depth and the wide range of different ways of speaking English uh, there's at least four, possibly five or six. Um, so off the top of my head, just to share, uh, what I've learned is that native, native in country is one. Uh, then you have, so that would be when I'm talking to my parents here. Uh, then um, native, speaking to native, but from different language or from different um, English dialects, let's say. So if someone's speaking Queen's English versus my kind of continental American English, uh, that ends up being another one. Uh, and you have communication barriers, styles, words, all, you know, all those different components. So that factors into it. Um, then the next, as we kind of work down, would be um, American International. So as I'm abroad speaking to a non-native, um, that would be one. Then you have non-native um, to other uh, a fellow non-native and what I've heard from many of my non-native friends who are, are extremely good at English but they always say that <clears throat> it's much easier to speak to other non-natives typically than it is to to speak to um, a native speaker uh, because they share common phrasing pacing uh, and word choice uh, which you know makes a lot of sense when you when you get down to it and you think about it um, but then also the other area that really doesn't get discussed or talked about or thought about that much is, and that I've become very acutely aware of, is uh, native to native, but who are immersed in non-native environments. So when I'm speaking to another American who has spent a long time as an expat or an international in Denmark or in Europe, we use a, a modified version of native English. So our vocabulary is probably still more extensive and more uses much more slang <clears throat> than than um, a non-native conversation or we would in a in a conversation with a non-native. But we still use less and our pacing tends to be slower, more drawn out, uh, and our word choice more limited than it would be if we were speaking with that same native person or native speaker back in in our home country. Um, and that's kind of that blend because your 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 pacing, your your word choice, the use of slang, all of those different things. When you spent uh, more than six months abroad, um, that tends to it tends to change a little bit. And so, what's been very interesting, and and what I really like about coming back, is that I was I was becoming acutely aware of the fact that not so much when I was writing, uh, but in my spoken English. Uh, my functional vocabulary had probably shrunk by, I, I would loosely guess, a, a thousand words. Um, so where, and, and as someone very interested in, in English and in, and in language, 
and uh, a bit of a wordsmith and perhaps a little bit verbose as this video is probably illustrating <coughs> i um you know, I, I would struggle with words that would would otherwise be words that I would automatically have in my instant recall. Uh, so this time back in the U.S., I can feel it has kind of recharged and re uh, reengaged those parts of my kind of conversational uh, narrative and dialogue, and and and, and refreshed my my active vocabulary um, to a degree. I think it's still not back. I would need to spend more time back in the U.S. to to fully get that back up to speed. Um, and uh, that ends up being a very interesting thing, something that I'm, I'm very aware of. But uh, it's also made me made me very aware that my my thought process in speaking and my pacing and, and, and the amount of time I take when I'm speaking um, between words and pauses and the structure of my um, of my enunciation, perhaps, uh, and uh, how I'm expressing myself has changed and uh, it has become slower, which I think is is partially a little bit because that's something that I've been working on in speaking with with people that I really respect um, because when there is more of a pause and you take the time to think between words uh, that tends to be very beneficial um, but uh, but also it's it's just you know I think a, a very natural uh, occurrence given my time spent now abroad and uh, that it had been two years since I'd been back and to be fair, I, I, I have spent time in other uh, in other native-speaking countries uh, in little bursts. You know, time in uh, in, uh, in in the UK most recently, um, but that's uh, that's Queen's English, and uh, depending on uh, what part of London I'm in, uh, I may not even understand uh, a tenth of, or rather, a tenth of what what they say. I may not understand. Um, so uh, I, I'm not going to count that, but uh, so it's it's been very interesting, and I think I'll look back through these videos actually and and see if I notice a difference, which I suspect I probably won't, but perhaps there is. If you've noticed one, uh, feel free to weigh in. Anyway, that is today's reflection. Uh, it is it, it's been absolutely amazing here in southwestern Colorado. The uh, the mountains have been glorious. Uh, you can see it's a bit cloudy today, but um, it still hasn't really rained. Uh, I've had sun the entire time, which has been great because I've been in a tent um, or a little bit of clouds, but type of clouds that have you know been been nice to see and uh, I'm just slightly distracted by a beautiful hummingbird that's uh, hitting some of the flowers. So uh, anyway, it's a, it's an incredible place and uh, I you know southwestern Colorado, hands down one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Uh, if you get the chance to come explore the San Juan Mountains, get above 7,000 feet, uh, I hope you'll do it. It is, it is, uh, I don't know, it's a slice of home. Anyway, thank you as always for tuning in. I appreciate it. Let me know any final questions. There's still time, so uh, feel free to comment, post, ask, and I will do my best to respond. Safe travels, open roads.